All right, so I have two pieces of vegetables that I grow every single year in my garden. That is the spaghetti squash and the butternut squash. They're super easy to grow in the garden. They do need a lot of room because they grow on a vine-like structure. But both of these are pretty versatile, meaning you can kind of marry most ingredients with it, especially the spaghetti squash. They call it spaghetti squash because you will see it looks like strings of spaghetti that get extracted from the interior of this squash. And the butternut squash, not as versatile, but you can add a lot of warm spices to this, especially for this time of year. So I'm gonna make a dish that marries the two, and I've been cooking with both of these for many years. All right, so the first thing I'm gonna do is cut open this spaghetti squash. Once you get a sharp knife in there, it cracks open pretty easily, and when you open it up, it's actually really beautiful inside. You can see you have all these seeds right here. Those you do have to take out. So I'm gonna take a spoon and basically you easily just spoon out the interior part of the spaghetti squash. We're gonna take some olive oil and just kind of brush the olive oil on on the inside of the spaghetti squash. Just gonna sprinkle a little bit of salt on both and the same thing with just a little bit of pepper just to give a little bit of seasoning to it while it's cooking because spaghetti squash has very little flavor. That's why I said it's so versatile. It can go with anything because it doesn't have a strong flavor. So there you go. Salt, pepper, olive oil. You can either put it on a baking sheet or you can put it on one of these deeper brownie pans. And I always add a little bit of water to the pan and you're gonna put it flesh side down inside the water because the water is gonna help steam it while this is in the oven and that is it. Okay, now it's on to the butternut squash. The spaghetti squash is inside of the oven and unlike the spaghetti squash, which you don't have to peel, you do have to peel the butternut squash. Okay, once you have that peeled, you're gonna take your knife and you're just gonna take off the top, just a very tiny little bit of it and the same thing on the bottom. You're gonna take the bottom off. That is just scraps. And then with the butternut squash, the neck of it here, the long part, that is all flesh inside. There's no seed. So I always cut it to just about the end where the seeds are gonna start. So you can see how beautiful orange color that is in the middle. And then the other side has the seeds, which you're going to cut in half. And then I just take again a spoon and then you're going to extract any of the seeds. Okay, once you have it all cut up, then you're going to cut the butternut squash, which is really easy to do, into one inch cubes. Okay, so now I just add a couple tablespoons of olive oil to kind of coat all of your butternut squash. I just throw in, I don't know, maybe it's a tablespoon. I do everything really by hand. A tablespoon or so of salt a tablespoon or a little bit less of some pepper on there and then your warm spices of the nutmeg and the cinnamon which is optional it's up to you if you like nutmeg or cinnamon and then you're going to give these a quick toss in the bowl to coat it all up get it all nicely coated and once you have them coated you're going to put them on a baking sheet and put them in an oven for 400 degrees a pretty high temperature for 20 to 30 minutes so i've got my baking sheet here and you want to make sure you spread all these out so they're not on top of one another and they cook evenly so what i'm going to do is heat up a couple of tablespoons of olive oil inside the pan and also throw in my garlic and now garlic does burn pretty quickly so I'm only going to keep this in for a minute or two once you start to hear it sizzling. So once that's in there, I'm going to swish it around. You're going to let this cook for a minute or two just to get a golden brown. And then we're going to add our chickpeas into the mix. And a chickpeas in there and you can hear that beautiful sizzle and get these cooked just for about a couple of minutes before we add all the rest of our ingredients. And I like adding chickpeas because the spaghetti squash is, again, not a lot of flavor. This adds at least a little bit of protein into the mix and will add a little bit of a crunch to it. Okay, so I can hear them popping a little bit and they're turning a golden brown on the edges so we know that they are completely done after a couple of minutes and see that beautiful steam coming off as well. So now, basically, I'm gonna turn the heat off and then I'm gonna add my tomatoes into the mix, whole cherry tomatoes. 
I like to have them blister just a little bit in the heat, so don't cut them up. They'll add actually a beautiful look to the dish once it's done. And then I add one onion that I finely chopped up, and that you can find on my chili recipe, how to properly chop an onion, and also some yellow bell pepper that I also chopped up. So put those in there, and then the final touch is taking one lemon and squeezing the juice of one lemon into the dish. And also one thing before, I forget, a little bit of salt in there because the spaghetti squash again has no flavor and some pepper as well in there. And that is beautiful, ready, and sitting aside until that spaghetti squash is done. Right. Now, brown buttered sage sauce that is gonna go with the butternut squash. This is the only unhealthy part of the dish, but it's gonna add a really pop of flavor. Now, I'm melting down one stick of butter, and you can see how it is turning a nice golden brown color. That is called brown butter. It's basically just cooking it. So once it turns brown, you're gonna add one minced clove of garlic into the dish, and we're gonna let that just cook for just about a minute, not too much longer than that, because this is bubbling up nicely. So I went to my garden. I love growing herbs every single year, and I picked off some sage. Sage and butter marry like Mr. and Mrs. Claus do. They're just perfect for one another. So I've chopped up about a quarter cup of the sage. You put the sage in there. Now we cook this down for another minute or two. You can see that bubbling up really nicely here. And once that is done, a minute or two, your sauce is complete. It's easy as that. And we're just gonna finish it with some black pepper and add the butternut squash to it. Okay, so these look absolutely perfect. You can see they are nice and crispy. You got a little bit of charness on some of the sides, so these babies are done. Okay, so I poured the brown buttered sage sauce inside the bowl and continue to add the butternut squash into it and just let these sit and marry with one another, kind of bond, mingle, have some fun, and believe me, the longer they play with each other, the better they're going to taste. <laughs> Sounds a little, a little weird, but you'll catch my drift. Okay, so I pulled up the spaghetti squash, and you can see it's steaming nicely here. You take it out of the pan, put it on either the counter or a cutting board, and just let these cool for a good 15, 20 minutes before you scrape out the interior. But as you can see, these are looking absolutely perfect. Okay, so now you fork out the spaghetti squash from the interior. It looks just like strings of spaghetti, but it's so much healthier for you. And again, when you pair it with what I made, it's gonna taste extremely scrumptious. You won't even know it's that healthy for you. So again, you take your fork and you're just gonna constantly scrape the inside and get all of that beautiful flesh out that has been basically cooked and steamed inside of the oven. And if you don't wanna wait for it to be done in the oven, you can do it in the microwave, which I'm gonna put the instructions on my recipe page, weatheringthekitchen.com. And I like to add a little bit of salt and pepper into this. Again, does not have a ton of flavor to it and there's nothing worse than not seasoning your food properly with salt and pepper. It's kind of to your tasting. And then I warmed up the vegetables that I made earlier just to get them a little bit nice and hot. Add that into a big bowl with the spaghetti squash. And you're gonna mix that all together. And then we're gonna take our butternut squash and the saged butter, add that into the dish. In there and now you're going to gently fold this. Okay, so I made myself a plate and now I'm just shaving some fresh Parmesan cheese on the top and you can choose whatever cheese you want. No cheese, feta cheese, cheddar cheese, goat cheese, any kind. And that is it. You can see how simple this is. Yes, those squashes can be a little intimidating, but it's super simple. This does not take a whole lot of time for something really healthy for you and the kids. And I promise the kids are really gonna like this, even yourself. And you can eat this dish, I mean, look how beautiful that is, on its own as lunch or dinner, or you can put a piece of sauteed salmon on the top or some grilled chicken on the top or on the side. But this is gonna be lunch and dinner. Actually, it's gonna be dinner for Carl and I tonight. I hope you enjoyed this. Again, give it a try, and we will see you next time on Weathering the Kitchen.
Thanks for watching this video. If you want to learn more or get some recipes, right below me, weatheringthekitchen.com. In addition, check out that video. You may learn something new. Also, hit the subscribe button. I'll push content out every Saturday morning, whether it's in the kitchen, in the garden, or home decor. Don't miss out.